Hey everybody, Bobby Medina here, bringing you another exclusive and super fun interview with a, with a very uh, interesting and exciting uh, trumpeter and uh, musician. But uh, to introduce him, I'm gonna bring on my very dear friend, uh, great trumpeter, commercial player, lead player. Uh, he's worked with everybody and he's also the author of his uh, own trumpet book, uh, Trumpet Voluntarily. Uh, which I enjoy and work out of here. I will introduce the great uh, Paul Barron. Hi, everybody. I'd like to now introduce my good friend, uh, Oliver Grunwald. We met about uh, 25 years ago in Bellingham, Washington, when he was studying with uh, Chuck Israels. And I'll just give you um, a quick list. Uh, it's a very extensive list of his accomplishments, but uh, uh, a few highlights here. Um, three master's degrees in composition and arranging and jazz performance. Um, he's got a classical bachelor and post master's degree um, and a professor of music. Uh, he taught in Detmold, Germany and in Bremen and also a teacher's assistant at Western Washington University. Um, as a clinician, he's taught in Germany, the Netherlands, Turkey, Austria, Italy, in the United States and toured Europe with uh, Broadway musicals and uh, a very accomplished composer and arranger with many, many, many uh, compositions in Bremen for the World Brass uh, in Detmold and for the Canadian Brass and uh, a very short list of his extensive list of recordings with the NDR Big Band, his own new net, the Austrian Jazz Orchestra and Mark Murphy. So, uh, hand it back to you, Bobby. Welcome. Hey, Ollie. Hey, Bobby. Thank you for having me. It's, it's such a pleasure. I really enjoy your group and, and uh, all you do. This is really enriching. Well, thank you. We've been having a good time. You know, Paul's been a big part of, of helping grow this site and uh, keeping everybody involved. And, you know, we've been uh, putting our heads together, trying to think of some, you know, really nice, uh, interesting uh, people to bring on and to create some uh, just a, a, some really unique content for people. And uh, well, that's partly why you're here. You're not just a friend, but you're somebody we find uh, really, really interesting. And uh, I'll let me let me throw out a, the first. Let's get this party started, and I'll throw out a little bit uh, uh, to you here. But I know you've had a long uh, association with the great Willie Thomas, who was a, a wonderful jazz instructor and a jazz trumpet player. And uh, I know you you kind of helped him, and you've taken over um, his. Uh, the site and everything that he started. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Because that's pretty exciting. Yeah, uh, Willie Thomas. This is actually the same time uh, Paul and I met. It was in, in, in Bellingham and it was uh, 94, 1994. And um, I got uh, uh, this, this teaching assistant position in Chuck Israel. Uh, we met in Austria. So it's all like one story and so I, I, I arrived one day in Bellingham and um, uh, I was of course I needed a house and uh, Chuck uh, mentioned there's a trumpet player Willie Thomas who also just arrived in Bellingham and uh, he uh, was looking for a roommate and uh, I said good here I am and um, I never heard about Bellingham or Willie Thomas before. And uh, I was in September and Chuck picked me up from Tacoma Airport and uh, dropped me off at Willie's house. And it was just great two years. I got uh, in the daytime input from Chuck Israels and then the, the rest of the day from Willie Thomas. And uh, that was a very, very uh, interesting time in terms of, of jazz education and teaching, since Willie uh, had a method of teaching um, I've never experienced with anyone before. I mean, as Paul mentioned, I spent a whole lot of time at universities studying and also teaching. And the way jazz was um, provided to me, catered, however you call it. Presented. Presented, that's it, is um, 
in a very creative, uh, self-experiencing way. And of course, there is transcribing music, there is uh, scales and theory and uh, all this very, very helpful thing. But uh, really, uh, he just unfolded his whole system with his pentatonic pairs and said, well, you do this and there and, and, and all relates to bebop and charlie parker and yeah so it started all all there in Benny. well and he he seems to have been quite a character huh yes yes <laughs> and uh, uh, uh at the end i i, I was his son-in-law you know um this is the family uh it's 25 years we we stayed in touch while i was back in germany I also remember Paul and I staying in touch and writing emails and, and so forth. And, um, you know, to be honest, sometimes I don't know if, if after Bellingham, I went back to Germany or after Germany, I finally went back home to the Northwest here. It's such a great feeling to be here and uh, having also a little part in the Seattle jazz scene. Yeah, so. there's a there's a nice scene here. I mean, up until a few weeks ago, a few months ago, I guess, uh, it's been a really mm -hmm. flourishing and creative community that, uh, you know, that I've been involved with. And, you know, Paul's been involved with it too. You know, we all get involved playing in the different bands and writing. I have, like, your, your group is very interesting. I have a more of a Latin jazz band kind of thing that I do. And, uh, and there's a lot of big bands around and stuff. So it's yeah. quite varied and it's nice, nice to, you know, talk with other people. Well, mm -hmm. why don't you, uh, you know, why don't you show us a little bit, if you can share a little bit of the screen here with us and uh, take, take our, um, our listeners through um, what it looks like a little bit and show them because uh, he's got a quite, quite a, really cool system um, of improvisation, kind of learning how to get into it that's guided step by step all the way from beginner through uh, higher levels, right? Yes, yes. And, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity. When I posted this uh, video uh, uh, with him playing when he was 15, uh, I saw a lot of comments about uh, where people met him as an educator. So, it's it's great uh, to have the chance to show a little because um, all this really ended up in his website. He started this website at the age of uh, almost 80. This is the way he would phrase it. And uh, um, it's uh, a huge compilation of, of videos. Here you are. And if you're a member, as you see uh, up here, you're welcomed by your name. That's me, Oliver. And he always used to say yo, right? When he yes. used to say hi, yo. Yeah, yo. <laughs> and um, well, uh, when, when, I, when I got here, finally, I retired officially from my teaching positions in Germany in 2013. And uh, I had a little sabbatical. So actually, practically since 2013, I'm here on the island and he has a cabin on our property. And Every two, three days, at least, I was down in his cabin and working. He was, he's a, he's, he's a worker. He, he practiced every day. He's, he's figuring stuff out. And this is how this website is coming together. It's a, it's a compilation of things where in his practicing or when he was teaching other people, like with, with Skype, he did some, some Skype lessons. And he was reflecting all this and he said, well, this is part, this is what's needed. And then he would sit down and, and put a lesson together. So that is the starting page. You can see here the, you, you're, you get to the lessons. We have a little block here. Soon to come will be a, a forum where, where, where you can uh, exchange your experiences with just everyone. And here's something about Willie. There are some tracks here, by the way, also the video I posted in your group. And uh, this is how uh, the website is structured with lessons. You see here on, on the left side, here's some... 
Yeah, it's really well done. You know, I mean, I originally, I originally got this for my son when I think my son was in junior high school and just starting to play uh, saxophone in the jazz band. And, uh, you know, I thought it would be uh, something else that was nice for him. And he, he did. He learned quite a bit, uh, a bit from it, uh, as did I. So I think, it's, I think it's a great resource for people looking to, um, to well, learn how to improvise. And, and uh, you know, so I'm, I'm involved in this. And, and I'm, I'm uh, you know, I worked a whole year that was 2017 and, and uh, uh, restructuring and upgrading uh, now it's like available for every device out there phone or whatever and uh, it is whenever i see those videos and see those lessons it's also a motivation you know there if you sit at home right you know those days or or whenever um you sit at home and and uh, you have to play along your instrument and you want to practice jazz and uh, you know Sometimes you can't make something out, up out of thin air. You need a motivator. And you just take a video and hear him talk and, 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 uh, or play with him. Here is, here is, this is a section uh, he calls this immersion zone, where you literally, you're playing with him. He's in his shed and, and, and um, records some videos. Where I'm, at this point, I like to... I like to mention that eventually the, you see here is the video. The quality is not like uh, 4K or whatever. Uh, it's almost, we, we thought about just making a sound file out of it. But then I find it, it's so charming. It is like the real Willy. And this was when he real time uh, served a, a, a play along where you can. <laughs> Yeah, he had such a great personality, you know. I mean, I think this, it really made, really made it, you know. Yeah. And it was fun listening to him play and the way he explained things. It's very, very cool, you know. And, and he was super experienced, you know. He had a lot of, uh, lot of uh, clinics and stuff he'd done over the years. Yes, and, and uh, uh, some of those clinics... Uh, um, I was with him the last years. We, we went to Texas State University and a couple of times to Louisville, uh, uh, Jamie Avers' department. And um, they were friends and mm -hmm. we were hanging out. And it is, and also in Germany. And, and it is something, especially if people start playing jazz, it's, it's funny. You're, you're an instant soloist, soloist. And so, you use as a kid or whatever you are asked to do something where you're not sure about it uh in front of anyone everybody uh and and uh, you play a solo and if this is not stress enough but then it should be good also and willie can like spread this vibe in the room where where this is secondary you know it's like the the, the joy of music as it is exactly yeah. Why don't you bring us back to gallery view so I can see you here and we can chat a little more about this. Uh, you know, you brought up a great point on this and it's something that was, um, <coughs> excuse me, something that was mentioned, you know, and there are people that um, like, that enjoy playing like me. I just, I, it's a habit for me. I have to play every day pretty much, you know, once in a while I'll take a day off or something like that. But I really enjoy playing and just for the sake of playing, whether I got gigs or not, of course, I love playing gigs. We love to get out there, but some people I see, they don't have much motivation to play if there's no gigs or whatever. But to me, this brings out a, a whole other thing, you know, which that's what you said. It motivates you to, per, to play and it feels like you're playing with other people, which is what's cool. Yeah, it is. Sorry, Ollie, I was just going to say that I, I've, thanks to you, I've started this uh, program and uh, maybe it's my German heritage or maybe it's that I'm a Taurus or something, but I, I need to have direction and, and I, I, I don't just like to sit down and go, 
okay, one, two, three, four, play along, and what do I play? And yeah. and for Willie to give me four notes or six notes or something, and I'm the call and response, I think, has been so helpful to me. I Really, in in four days now, I feel like my ears are twice the size. This is amazing. The, the, you know, uh, this is actually uh, uh, Clark Terry formed those three spots. It's about imitating, uh, assimilating, and innovating. And the, the, when you hear Willie playing, you know, it's, it's sometimes uh, when you do this long enough, I, I know, of course, a lot of those tapes, you start hearing something for you own. You know, it's like the call and response is like call and call after a while. And this is, this is something where, where, where I think is a huge advantage is in, in, in terms of, of I, should I call it speed? It is Willie, Willie, uh, Willie's website and the way he taught has also a certain amount of directness. That's not like a lot of uh, pedagogy, warm up, whatever is, whatever you get off the site, you can take to the stage immediately. And because it's, it's in the music. And this, this is, a, this is an aspect uh, I, I found really very interesting uh, as being also an educator, how much time sometimes you sort of, I wouldn't say waste, but you need to prepare actually the, the event, the real, this is what it's about. You know, you, okay, let's just practice thirds or so. Well, you know, you just need this third there and you make it run. So this is, you know. I, Practical I, application of it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and it's nice to be able to walk away from a practice session, you know, feeling like I really took something away and I can, I can, I can get through this tune rather than, well, I learned a bunch of scales, but you're still sort of scratching your head. You know, one, one thing uh, I learned from Bobby Shu many, many years ago was um, he had a thing called snowballing. And basically snowballing meant what he, what he would have me do is he would, he would say, just practice one thing. I don't care what that is. It might be some little lick. It might be uh, some technical thing, whatever it is. And practice that. I don't care if it takes you 30 seconds or if it takes you an hour. But don't leave until you figure out that one thing. Put your horn down. Go get a drink of water. Walk around. Pet your dog or whatever. Then come back to it. And then go to number two. And then pretty soon when you have these things really down like that, it's like a snowball. It starts off small and it starts to roll and it starts to get bigger and bigger and gain momentum. And I kind of feel like that with, with Willie's, uh, with his jazz everyone thing. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, uh, he, he liked the word system. You know, maybe you, you have figured out by now, I'm, I'm actually from Germany, <laughs> accent. <laughs> and, we um, never noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being patient. <laughs> um, it is it is uh, uh, the, the 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 structuring of, of the structure of practicing. There is the the the, the first corners where he actually starts with people. Um, there is always an introduction of a topic, a development, applying, improvising, and ear training, and uh, then also reflecting what what you what you have learned, and this. This can stand for its own and can be applied to your own idea. There's, there's, there, there's this thing I'm, I, I have experienced all the time when I was teaching and experienced with myself also is the trade between what is better, his idea or my idea. And um, I would highly recommend to say that uh, Willie's idea uh, is is, is the bebop idea, it's the bebop school of jazz. Uh, now in 2020, latest, there's European jazz, there's Italian jazz, there's uh, all kinds of jazz. But it, uh, one day I, 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 I sort of compared it to Bach. You know, there's like, you, you play all kinds of classic music, but there is a center uh, was developed in, in this area where where where, Herr, where Bach was important, 
And um, if you are if you are working with with Willie's uh, system, you can learn bebop, but you can also enrich yourself and play your own style or wherever you whatever you like to, to play. And I think this is very important to see that um, that Willie is very strong with his uh, uh, preference for bebop and and, and this this uh, era. But uh, it's not not something where you're not limited. Maybe this is what I like. Right, it's adaptable, <laughs> and you can you can adapt that to to your different needs. So I think that's cool. Well, I think that everybody, you know, if you're looking if you're looking to uh, learn to improvise or get better at improvising, uh, this JazzEveryone.com is a wonderful, wonderful tool, wonderful site. Uh, that that Ollie here is uh, is keeping up and expanding and making it better. Uh, I'd like to make a little left turn here because I have to tell you, I am like a huge fan of uh, not just your, your, uh, your ensemble, but your writing. I mean, your writing is incredible, you know, and so why don't you give us a little background on, on that and, and uh, what, what you do with this, with this, what's called your new tet, right? Well, it's called new net. New and, net, Sorry. Uh, this is this is a word game. Uh, actually, it's, it's it's we call it no net. That's the classical term, and that implies the word no. And I just wanted to be more positive, so I said, let's call it new net. <laughs> so and also it does does not really uh, limit me to nine people. We're already ten. We're actually with four saxophones now, and um, this is actually happened because we, we just recorded this uh, feature CD uh, featuring Jay Thomas. It's called uh, I Always Knew. Mm. And uh, Jay is uh, the lead alto player. And since he is featured, we needed some someone else in the section to, to take his chair. And uh, we loved him so much. So um, now we are four, we, we, we want him <laughs> with us. Um, so um, that was actually also something we're starting in the time in '94 when with, when I met up with Paul Barron, also with Dan Marcus and Jay Thomas. And um, when I came back in 2013, you see, I'm saying I came back. Uh -huh. um, it, it actually all you know, came together quick and I, it was, I don't, I don't know. I think uh, sometime spring 2013, I saw myself rehearsing this band at Cornish College in the band room and it was amazing. And uh, then, you know, we just kept, kept working. We had a pretty quick a gig uh, with the Earshot Jazz Festival at Tulis. And um, then uh, there's a whole set of videos from our concert at the, um, uh, what is it called? Good Shepherd Cathedral in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and uh, then the CD. And the CD is, is really, really highly appreciated. It was like 20 weeks in the charts of Jess Weekly is this called? Yeah, that's cool. You know, I mean, I've I've uh, seen the videos. I mean, if people want to see the videos, they can go over to your site. What is your site again? Your personal website? It's uh, my name Oliver Grunewald dot com. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of nice stuff posted there. I really have enjoyed it. You got like, you got you and Brad Allison are playing trumpet. He's another great trumpet player. Of course, Jay Thomas is not just a great trumpet player, but he's a he's a marvelous saxophonist, yeah. you know. And uh, Dan Marcus too, a great trombone player. You know, yeah. he and I we we've worked together uh, over the years too in different shows, and he's played with my band a number of times. And he's a uh, we're both. Uh, former Ray Charles members, so we have that in common, which is kind of nice. Well, I'm really, really blessed to have the chance uh, and have the band together and we, we are all able to rehearse at a nice place. You, you, this is another really good writer is Kurt Burke. I don't know if you know oh, him. Oh, yeah. He's out in Bellingham, uh, Bellevue. And, uh, 
I knew yeah. him down in LA years ago. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I also, you know, we're, we're, we're in touch. I like his arranging a lot, and I'm in his rehearsal band. When Jay's in Japan, I, I, I hop over to Bellevue and, and mm -hmm. stuff. Well, and the other things I'm writing is, is uh, commissioned. Is I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate to work now. Uh, 15 years for the German Chamber Orchestra, and uh, I did a lot of crossover projects for them, starting with Richard Galliano. And oh man, I love that guy. I love he yeah. plays with a dear friend of mine in uh, in Sweden, a piano player named uh, Jan Lundgren, and uh, and with Paolo Fresu, also the Italian trumpet player. So Richard Galliano and Fresu and, and Lundgren have a have a group together. Um, and it is incredible, really great player. He's an accordion player, by the way, everybody. <laughs> and the, the last uh, uh, project, or one of the last, was with Ira Rantala from Finland, a piano player in this city. It's an ACT, which is a pretty good label in, in, in Europe. And that's, that's great. And uh, also you, you probably saw on the website some videos from World Brass. This is a fantastic group. I'm also fortunate. I, that was one of my first commissions in, in, in Germany. It was 97 uh, by this group. And now it's like two or three CDs we, we did together and brass groups. Uh, well, even in even in your introduction, I mean, you know, we had Ronnie Rahm on a on a on a, a video with us a while back, and you've written for the Canadian Brass, and that's yeah. that's as good as it gets when it yeah. comes to brass ensembles, too. Absolutely, that was the time when uh, uh, Jérôme Bevatz, a Belgian trumpet player, was a part of this group. And he actually commissioned that. That was uh, a set of, because he also sings, was singing. And uh, uh, yeah, that was, I don't know, long ago. And yeah, there's a, a, a brass quintet in Hamburg. I don't know if you've checked out my SoundCloud link. They're like, uh, they commissioned uh, brass quintet arrangements on Bach uh, inventions and symphonia. This, uh, that was really, really fun to write. This is where, you know, when you, when you commission to write arrangements, um, you open yourself to arrange whatever comes your way. And that was an interesting commission that was uh, uh, write something on Bach and write like you would do. Of course, with the hint that I'm a jazz musician. Um, but then I thought, what could I do? You know, and then you learn from the composer, uh, and and it's like it's it's like you know a sort of give and take. You know, there's Bach, and what I did, I I, I stepped away from the idea of like doing a triplet feel swing kind of, and but I took the chance and um, took all of Bach's offering of reharmonizing. And uh, that was that was really nice. If you uh, the symphonia, the the slow, it's a free movement, practically thing. Um, that was that was that was really that was a trip, you know, of how you can work with music. And this is maybe back to the new net. Um, I do compose and I do have my own, you know, writing. But I really, really love the American songbook. They're, they're amazing. I will never get tired of Stella by Starlight or, or, or any of those compositions. And the, the thing is, the, the part of creativity to, to, to work with, with a standard, everyone knows, is, is like, um, this is on the way back is when I listen to someone and I get a CD in my hand, the first thing of all his own compositions, I'm looking for a standard I know. And then I can see what he does with that. And then I can see, this is where I have my joy. And, uh, you know, I, I, I still listen a lot of times to, to um, you know, the, the trio recordings with uh, Bob Brookmeyer, piano trio, or yeah. Bob Brookmeyer with uh, Bill Evans. 
Mm -hmm. This, 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 or, or Fed Jones playing quintet, you know, all those great arrangers, what they do in a small group and where they, where they, where they go with it. And it all started really with Chuck Israels. Kudos to this time with him uh, learning this. Mm -hmm. uh, he opened up the box and I, I remember we were laying on the carpet in his house in North Garden Terrace in Bellingham. And listen to uh, to 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 Bill Evans, and you know, I said, you know, oh, this is amazing. And Chuck said, okay, explain to me what is amazing here. Uh, you know, th this is where where the emotion gets into a, you know, okay, why is it amazing? I like it, but why do I like it? And then you start to analyze, and this is where this is a part of of of, of, of studying arrangement or you know composition is analyzing something you like Good well, cool how about you paul do you want to get in on this you got any other questions here for for ollie well i i just would i think that the audience would really appreciate um just sort of a little nugget of of information I, i'm now taking maybe a right hand turn to the pentatonic pairs if you can just entice everybody uh, with that little bit of knowledge of what that system is. I, I think that would draw, for, for me, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I almost stopped my question and now I have more to say. Um, for, for, for me, as, as you said, Ollie, a beginning um, jazz student, a, a young kid or somebody just coming to jazz for the first time can play a solo. They can use the system right away and get up on stage, as you said. Uh, for me, um, I'm always so self-conscious about uh, uh, about doing something that I'm not really comfortable with. You know that I I, I don't know that I I really own it. I, I feel fine when I'm looking at a page. Commercial lead player put something in front of me. I'll play it. I'm I'm not afraid of that. But I am afraid of. Um, you know, stepping on, on my, myself, uh, trying to play a jazz solo. And it's such a simple system to start with right away. Um, so could you explain the, the pentatonic pair idea just in a nutshell? Ha! Thank you for this, Paul. Well, um, that's, that's a challenge. Uh, but, um, the, you know, it always is, I would say it is when, you know, uh, also replying to your statement of, you know, you don't feel comfortable in a situation where it's not really defined what, what you do. This is actually a very, very good and very creative spot is being between what you have to do and the vision. If you don't have a vision, uh, no problem. Do what's given. And there is the, the, the pentatonic pairs is, uh, is a good start because the pentatonic pairs, I, I'll try. Is this distorting? Is this too loud? No, it's, it's fine. You know, the, the pairs, those, would, those four, four notes, this is already a lot. You can reduce the pairs just to, to one pair. So I know I play the blues, three, four. Great starting point. See, and you know, uh, there, there are schools here. You, you, you train to, to, to play scales and all this, and this kid doesn't have even the range to do it. You know, and this is, this is what I saw um, uh, in 98, that was the first time Willie was in Germany and we knew each other. Uh, he, he did a lot of work in Germany and working with kids in, and you know, it's not like blowing out the candle before it's even really has a flame. Uh, and, and they're all like, they're there with their trumpets, they're nuts. You know, they, they don't have 
a lot of barriers um, we learn later to have, you know, so they're really totally open. And you give those two notes and with his humor, uh, you go. And then you just add to it, you know, uh, at the end, uh, I played, you know, all. You can. Starts with those pairs, so in in, in um, the, as simple as possible explained is you you have you have a, a little shell which is already totally working. I mean uh, the the, the uh, what is the Ellington's blues Seijin blues? You know, it's just one note. You know, it's rhythm, and then you have something to 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 uh, to to extend on. The, the, the trap for people who are actually saying, and, and this is very well meant, you know, play what you feel. And, you know, every, every note is right. And all this, that can, be, that can be a burden because, you know, all of a sudden everything goes. So what goes? And so the, 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 the pentatonic pair system is actually a, a reduction of tone material. And this tone material is defining, as you you know the, the again the blues. You know this defining uh, uh, interval. You know five one and then the 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 other two notes are already upper neighbor. You know, and then you can go chromatic. This is those pentatonic pairs um, uh, connected with chromatic, and then you start hearing already what you hear all the time played by Charlie Parker or by whomever, because it's jazz language. This is this is another big thing with Willie. Whenever he talked about what he does, it was about the language. And this is, that, that's gold, you know? This is the, the, to, to, to put like those 12 notes together so it was, you know, makes sense in a way, you know? Musical um, identification with jazz and bebop. Well, I think whether you're a, whether you're a young kid or an old kid, you know, it's, it's certainly a fun way and a useful way and a helpful way to learn, you know. I think that's really cool. Well, listen, we are just about out of time. We'll put up your links on uh, underneath here, underneath our video. But uh, I got, a, I got a, a quick question for you that, I, that maybe people want to know about. What gear are you playing on currently? What do you use mostly? And let us know. Tell us about your... your your horns and your mouthpieces real quick. Oh, my horns, uh, that, that, this is Van Lark, Hoop Van Lark. And uh, before it was Selma, and uh, I was looking for a horn, I, I can't remember anymore, but Hoop Van Lark was in Sweden. And uh, on the way back to Germany, I used to live in Hamburg. Uh, he stopped at, uh, at my house, it was like a candy store. I had like all the horns there and I could, could, and it's yeah, 2010, it's 10 years now. It is a Van La Orion. And um, the flute horn is, um, I, I actually don't even know. It's also Van La. Uh, I like it, I like yeah. it. The Van La, I have to admit, I tried a lot of mouthpieces and the only mouthpiece it, it's not much about like how you like the mouthpiece, it's like how the flugelhorn likes it. And apparently the flugelhorn uh, is going exclusively with Bach, <laughs> at least when I play. The, I remember having a show with, uh, uh, being able to play the show with Brad um, was uh, Hunchback a couple of years ago, where I had to change the lock between trumpet and flugelhorn. And that was, that was hard work 
to be in tune right away, in tune and in balance. Uh, and uh, uh, since I do Bach mouthpiece, that works. And what, si what, what size is that that you're playing? Do they offer different bowl sizes or does Bach is just a standard flugel bowl with the whatever size rim on it and back bore? This is a seven, seven WL. I have, I have like a wider, wider, wider rim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the the trumpet mouthpiece I, I I really like uh, Warburton and um, also Bach, where I'm like uh, I I play three, and uh, Warburton is uh, I have uh, uh, um, a five, yeah five MD five D, it's wonderful. I I tried recently a mic. Vax backboard, which was awesome. I have to, you know, this is where I work. You know, that would be a question. Maybe I don't know if it's that important, but uh, to learn about your thoughts or your experience about the connection between the quality of tonguing and the tightness or opening uh, of the backboard. Uh, if there is a connection, I could. Yeah. There is, but it's a subject of a long conversation oh, okay. that we should probably have a beer over. Yes, oh, I would look forward to this. I, I really appreciate the IPAs you got here. We don't <laughs> have this. Well, that's that's uh, that's interesting hearing about those. Um, um, I think we're just about done here. Paul, do you got a last anything last minute to, to close with? No, I don't. Thank you for explaining that. I just want a, a, a short little comment uh, about the pentatonic pairs. I'm sorry I keep coming back to it. I'm just so excited um, that I'm, I'm, I'm successful uh, using the system. Um, and what it's done for me, uh, of course, there's no place to play now, so <laughs> I, I'm not taking it on stage. But it's giving me a sense of accomplishment and and a feeling of success that I want to continue on. I want to, okay, what's the next lesson? I can't wait to get to it. Um, so I just wanted to share that experience with you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you for being here and spending time with uh, with all of us here, Ollie. It was really, really informative and really nice to, to hear your take on all of this stuff and to learn a little bit uh, more about you. And I hope uh, after all this uh, COVID stuff blows over that we're, we're not too far apart. The three of us get together one of these days in the not too distant future. I think that would be really fun. I think this oh, is the first time we've had um, a, a group together that's all in the Northwest. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Well, we'll look forward to it. We'll put some uh, info up here and feel free. Maybe people have questions about it online. So, you know, keep your eye on the post. And if people, if you have, a, if you have some ideas or questions you want to present to uh, Ollie, write them down there underneath the video that you see. And uh, if he's got some time, he'll uh, chime in a little bit for you. How's that sound? Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much again for having me. Okay, guys. Thanks so much. We'll look forward to seeing you soon. All right. Bye-bye now. See you guys. Bye.